Hey everyone, Ready Rex here, and today I'm going to be reacting slash reviewing Hosier, <laughs> the self-titled album by who could have guessed Hosier. <laughs> so I'm really, really excited to get into this. I've already reacted to both Wasteland Baby and Unreal Unearth. Uh, how long ago was that? I don't know. It's been a while. It was like a month after Unreal Unearth is when I put out my video for that, which if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend it. Not to brag, but uh, I think it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good video. So yeah, definitely check that out and go ahead and check the Wasteland Baby one out too while you're at it. But yeah, so this is kind of like a prequel video to those two since it was the first album. I kind of went all out of order with this. So I first listened to Wasteland Baby because I heard it, was, heard it was really good and I'd heard a couple songs on it that I really liked. One of my favorite songs of all time was on that album. So I did a video for that and then I was like, okay. Well, I guess I better react to this one. But then Unreal Unearth was announced and I'm like, well, this one's kind of fresh. And I didn't have time to record this one between Wasteland Baby and Unreal Unearth. So I did Unreal Unearth and now I'm finally to his first album that I know of unless there's some secret album out there. Where are you hiding him? Who, me? Also, heads up right away, I, I almost completely forgot. This is going to be the expanded edition. I'm listening to the full expanded edition on top of just the regular album because I've heard the last songs on the expanded edition are also really good. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to get the full experience the best that I could, especially because I've been enjoying Hosier so much. Actually, that reminds me. Hold up. Wait a minute. So <laughs> I went ahead. I bought the vinyl. If that like tells you how much I liked that album, I really, really enjoyed Unreal Unearth. And guess what? I also bought the Wasteland Baby vinyl, so I'm really, really hoping I like this album just as much as I did these previous two, because again, they were they were really, really good albums, and I really enjoyed them. So hopefully I'll have this, uh, this vinyl in my vinyl collection as well. <laughs> that, that's the goal here. So yeah, I'll leave a link in the description to my reactions to those two albums. So also, I almost forgot, I want to mention it really quick, I'm not going to be watching the videos this time around. I ended up having to cover them anyways in all my other previous videos. Uh, it's some copyright stuff where I just can't show the videos on my stream. So I'm just going to be using Spotify. And then I got the lyrics pulled up on my other monitor along with the lyrics here on Spotify. <laughs> Let's get into Take Me to Church, the song that everybody knows and loves. Okay, also, really quick, this is one of three songs I've heard before on this album. All right, let's get to it. My lover's got humor, fresh poison each week. It's so hard not to we sing to this song. To Take me to church. I need that deathless death. Oh, good God, let me give you my life. All right. <laughs> yeah, I remember this song so well. It's hard to forget it. It's so catchy, and it was played on the radio pretty a lot, wasn't it? I feel like it was. Because uh, I've heard it so many times. Okay, let me pause it really quick before it gets into the next song. Obviously, that song is awesome. I still really, really enjoy it. I think the meaning of it is pretty well known at this point. I don't know, like, the exactness of everything. But I do know that basically it's kind of a... Uh, uh, it's like a criticism of churches, especially ones that reject LBGTQ+. So I, as far as I know, I think that meaning is pretty well known. I don't know if there's any, like, major sub, sub meanings in this one. But even, like, when I'm listening to it and looking at the lyrics lyrics it all just seems like a bunch of just different like metaphors and just all, all sorts of just different figurative languages to kind of display that that criticism of of churches this is the only one i really want to look at the song meaning of and not try to come up with it myself for the most part just because this one is so well known yeah it says it's a critique of russia's anti-lgbt plus policy according to genius to be clear i love the parts whenever he sings amen like during the pre-chorus and then i think it's at the end of yeah at the very end of the bridge that part especially i think sounds really really good I don't know. It just it feels so nice that and then what I think is a bass guitar. There's almost like a bass drop, but it's just it's a literal bass drop. Take me to uh, it's <laughs> which is very interesting. And I love the sound of that. Overall, the song sounds really good. Nothing has changed about that. I love this song so much. It's super catchy. I probably know most, if not every word to this song, even though I think when I was singing it earlier, I messed up one word. See if you can figure out which one that was. <laughs> yeah a great song i've known this one for a long time uh i think it's impossible for this one to get old okay maybe it could get old if you're really listening to it on repeat but at least now it doesn't feel old at all and it's been played so much and it's still able to sound good so that's a testament to how good this song is anyways <laughs> let's get on to a song i actually haven't heard before all right so we got angel of small death 
in the codeine scene. Haha, <laughs> that is a crazy long name, and I like the I like the sound of codeine scene. Not that codeine is great, but codeine scene. I don't know. That that that's got a kind of catchy ring to it. Okay, let's get right into it. the guitar solo okay that one was a little weirder i feel like compared to some of the other stuff i've heard from them there's a lot of similarities but at the same time it was very different as well it felt very uh it felt like it was a folk song almost like it was something that people would chant kind of i i feel like that's that's kind of obvious just because he's literally it feels like it's just directly a chant i don't know <laughs> maybe maybe that's just me uh but if that like weird chanting vibe that's going on is strange but at the same time i feel like i've definitely heard it in some of his previous or not previous actually his future albums so maybe this is just the the less refined version of those or i don't even want to say less refined but kind of like the the og version of some of the other things he does later on but i don't know it, it feels weird though and also i thought it was interesting that it was so acoustic sounding throughout most of the beginning like probably for the first half of the song it felt very very acoustic like or indie i think indie and acoustic is a really good way to put it until about halfway through where the voices started getting layered up a little bit and then the instrumental picked up and then it felt a lot more studio like take me to church not quite to that level for some reason take me to church uh how it's like mix mastered produced everything about it just feels like it's much more a studio song versus uh angel of small death in the codeine scene hopefully i don't say that too many times <laughs> that is a long name to say um i'll probably just say codeine scene from now on so i don't know i wonder if the rest of the album at this point is going to be more like towards an acoustic or indie sound or if it's gonna feel more produced like take me to churches that's something i'm really really interested in finding out because that seems it's so weird that within one song it kind of switches from that like an indie sound to more of a produced song like the way that it does in that one you know what? it also reminds me a lot of the chris stapleton album i reacted to on this channel okay that album was called starting over i feel like there's some similarities with this song and some of the songs from starting over because there's definitely i don't know maybe it's just me but it feels like this song is more country influenced than a lot of his other stuff let me know if you feel the same way about that because that may just be a me thing but it really does feel like there's some uh country influence in this one man i honestly i can see chris stapleton being a feature on this <laughs> or having like his own like verse somewhere put in there i don't know what he'd sing but i i could see it i think or maybe like a duo verse with both of them. I think that might be a little bit better. So yeah, overall, I think that song is pretty good. Uh, it's not my favorite by any means, but I definitely, I thought it was good enough for this album. I'll see how it goes though, and how it blends in with the album as I'm listening. That may change. My thoughts on it may change kind of based on the songs around it. I don't know if I'll come back to that one as much as some of his other music, but it's still one that I'd love to hear while listening through an album. Okay, so up next, we've got jackie and wilson kind of reminds me of like bonnie and clyde or uh hansel and gretel okay i'm just listing pairs of names <laughs> what am i doing <laughs> gotta crank up the volume on this one okay i'm gonna pause this really quick this that chorus was incredibly catchy immediately and even this song right off the bat i knew i would like it pretty much instantly from that guitar riff that guitar riff is a really really good mixed in with the percussion too it just mwah, chef's kiss uh anyways let me get back to it i want to listen to the rest of this one <laughs> this is super atmospheric Whoa, the the way that that song ended was really weird for me. I feel like, I don't know, it just felt so off compared to other stuff that I've heard from uh, Hosier, where it's like, I really was expecting some sort of like either choir outro or like some sort of instrumental outro to it. That was, it was so sudden. Also, I want to mention right away, it's another uh, like indie sounding song. I mean, it makes sense considering this is his first album. I would expect there to be an indie sound to it unless it was... Uh, immediately brought to a studio maybe it was but it sounds very indie uh and i think that'll probably be a theme for a good chunk of this album from here on out 
I think there's some there was something different about the first song, uh, "Take Me to Church." I don't know why. Maybe it had more people on it to help him with, and he just needed access for that one song to a studio. I don't know. I'll, I'll probably stop talking about that one though for now because I could keep on talking about the differences between that one and the rest of these songs so far. Yeah, this one I love the fun sound of it. Throughout it, it sounds really good. Again, during the instrumental, I was saying that it's very atmospheric. The way that he had those like backing vocals, the way that he had it kind of phase in the background like it felt like you were at a distance away from it kind of like 8d audio if you've heard that before where it just kind of sounds like the singer is uh when they're circling around you they're like always at like a distance that's what was going on during that instrumental with those backing vocals and i really really love that it just it creates the, this atmosphere as if like you're actually there actually listening to this uh to this band live and it's such an awesome feeling yeah the chorus on this one is super catchy everything about it just sounds great again guitar riff is really good the percussion is really good this was a very well put together song also it seems like as far as i can tell meaning wise it feels like it's mostly just about kind of living your life the way that you want to like he was talking about how they tried going around the world like going to different places and they didn't really like it and then they moved on basically to wanting to start a family and then like also within the course it's probably good to mention that at first like the first half is uh like they're having fun which i think kind of correlates to the traveling the world part where they're yeah stealing lexus being detectives riding around picking up clues i feel like that is kind of insinuating that they're again going around the world doing what they want traveling where they want to do or where they want just basically living their lives how they want and then they finally kind of get tired of it and they want to settle down and that's when the second part of their chorus comes in where they're like we'll name our children jackie and wilson and then that last line though the raise them on rhythm and blues that makes me think that it's like they enjoyed that first part of their lives i think the creativity of rhythm and blues in this situation is kind of their outlet for showing that they still have still have like a lot left in them still have like a lot of creativity and want to share those like good feelings with those kids with their kids maybe i'm reading too far into it but that's it's almost like a story in in my head and that is like they've had their kids and now they want to show them that they can have fun and that they can live their lives the way that they want to too uh i think music is a great outlet for that i think music is a good way to kind of show uh creativity as a whole and show that there's more to life especially i think in this context so overall a great song this one might end up being one of my favorite favorites on the album to be honest because i really really like it but it's too early to say i mean what am i on third song of the album so i guess i'll just get to the next one okay here's the next one okay so now we got someone new this time i have the lyrics up for you guys now <laughs> last time i forgot to put them up on spotify yeah let's get straight into this let's do this someone new Ooh. okay so firstly i want to mention right now before i forget these songs they i feel like they're just tending to end more abruptly than a lot of his newer stuff does which i find really interesting and i think it shows that later on like those kind of thought process he was having where it's like he really just wanted to like he thought about it and he was like okay maybe i should start expanding these out to really What's a good way to put that? I don't know. I, I think it just shows more creative juices that are <laughs> that are going on in his mind later on. This song sounds fantastic. I loved it a lot. <laughs> I think the chorus is incredibly catchy. I was stuck between a few different meanings here and there and different like verses and throughout the chorus even. When he's singing and I fall in love just a little a little bit every day with someone new. My first thought was like, is this is he like lonely? So he's like trying to meet with new new people like pretty like often trying to find the one that's for him. But then later on, as the song went on, I realized that I think it's more showing kind of love to to everybody, like everybody, like everybody should love everybody, like that type of situation. The perfect, perfect world, like the ideal world where everybody gets along and everybody has some love for everybody. Everybody love everybody. Right there up on the wall. I feel like that's more of the point that he's getting across with. I might be wrong, but that is kind of what i've kind of come to the conclusion of and then at like the beginning where he says only blue or black days i thought that was super interesting because he's separating black and blue by first reversing it because usually when somebody says black and blue they've been either hurt emotionally or they've been hurt physically because like bruises are black and blue and i thought so first of all he switched black and blue so it's blue or black and then on top of that he adds or in the middle instead of and so then that insinuates that it's two separate things in which i think he's getting to that blue is like sad days and then black are like just bad days in general uh if i had to guess and it seems like that's how he was living his life all every day was black or blue <laughs> just bad days upon bad days 
and then he kind of moved into this idea of like to enjoy life i need to stop doing things like holding grudges stop showing bad feelings towards other people hateful feelings or anything like that and really just embrace embrace everybody for who they are really just embrace people as a whole and show some love to people because i mean you never know what people are going through that's i think that's what this is about at least that's my idea that's what first comes to mind let me know though because this could be all sorts of stuff it's hosier right? you never know uh one thing that i was really confused on is the bridge though where it's like i wake at the first cringe of morning and my heart's already sinned how pure how sweet i love aretha that you would pray for him i would have no idea where that would fit in this little story that i've created with this song i i literally have no idea i think aretha might be some greek god or something to do with greek i don't know that wouldn't be surprising because he has a habit of including greek stuff in his music so that's what i'm thinking that likely is but again really good song i thought it was super catchy and anyways let's get on to the next one okay so up next we have to be alone let's get straight into it change <laughs> all right see there's that same type of ending there again where it just it's that one second <laughs> i had to move my mic up because my cat was hitting her head on it um it's the same type of ending where it's like it just is so sudden is that is that gonna be every song on this i i'm, I'm really curious about this now um so as a whole i think this is probably so far my least favorite uh that being said though i don't think it sounds bad i think there's just certain parts that i don't like as much like i don't like the pre-chorus as much i don't like the pace change that comes with that it sounds kind of weird to me but i guess i i kind of understand why people would enjoy that and i understand why he's kind of going for it them thematically wise uh but but for me, it's not really hitting with me. That being said, though, I think the chorus sounds good and the refrain is heavenly. I really, really like the refrain. That's basically what I, I'm waiting for. I'm <laughs> waiting for it to show up every time now. After the first time it came on and the second time, I was like so ecstatic to hear it again. <laughs> it sounds so good. And when I was listening to the refrain, too, I just it came to my mind. It's like, I don't know if he has any backup vocals on any of these songs or if it's always just him. Because sometimes he's able to mimic... I feel like he sounds like a, a girl sometimes. I, I, it's like, I don't think it's him. But I might be wrong. It could just be him. There's a good chance it is. Especially on this one. This one, it definitely sounds like him. But some of the other ones, the backing, like... Oohs, the oohs and ahs, I can't tell. I can't tell if it's him or somebody else. Uh, which is just interesting. <laughs> so, right at the first verse, he says... Never feel too good in crowds with folks around when they're playing the anthem anthems of rude culture loud, rude and proud, and then etc. So by that, I wonder if he's talking about how a lot of modern songs, there is a lot of themes of basically just really sexist stuff. And then I'm sure that there's a lot that have rude culture kind of within ingrained in the songs. Like you can definitely pick up on that on some songs for sure. And then, okay, so obviously this feels like a very sex oriented song. Uh, the chorus alone, it feels good, girl. It feels good. That immediately just comes to mind. This is probably sexual stuff that's going on. It seems to expand on that kind of uh, the, the theme of rape in other ways, too. With the pre-chorus where it's like, but you don't know what the hell you put me through. You have someone kiss the skin that crawls from you. Obviously, this person doesn't want it. They're trying to get away. Honestly, this kind of feels gross to talk about, uh, which I think is probably good on the song's part because that means it's really getting its message across. So <laughs> there's that. And then later on, I specifically the line, honey, we should run away. Oh, someday our baby and her mama and the damaged love she made where the damaged love she made being that, again, is probably a sexual assault uh, that caught that w that is the damaged love in this case. And that now her and her what I assume is like someone that she's actually close with a like an actual significant other rather than who uh assaulted her or it's more of like a, a third person or omniscient point of view where it's like when he says our baby and her mama it's like a narrator talking about some mom and her baby i don't know it's kind of hard to say but i thought that was an interesting line that really added to the theme uh, i don't know overall i definitely i don't think it's my favorite song in the album <laughs> I, I think i can say that with some certainty i really really like the last one 
and I've liked all the other ones I think a little more than this one again that being said I think overall it sounds all right and I think the message that he's trying to put across is good if I'm getting that correct feels like he's trying to spread awareness and talk about these things that are negative in society and yeah again I think he's doing a really good job at doing that because it's very clear uh what he's talking about here the fact that it's able to make make me uncomfortable the thought like just listening to it and thinking about it I think that's when you know that it did what it was set out to do it made sure that you felt uncomfortable which in turn I think really shows the message that he's getting across I've kind of repeated this a couple times but like I, re I really think that's incredible that he was able to do it so well so anyways <laughs> let's get to the next song we'll see where this uh this goes thematically it might be more of this probably not though I think he he's pretty good at switching themes while keeping an overall theme throughout an album based on how Unreal Unearth and Wasteland Baby were it's like the theme could change from song to song, but the overall theme would kind of encapsulate all the songs. From Eden. All right, so now we've got From Eden. This is going to be more uh, more religion themed. I feel like there's all in a lot of his music, there is a theme of religion. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> happening is this a violin whoa we're getting an outro okay it's interesting that we got an outro like that on this one even though it was short because the like humming that was kind of going on right there at the outro but also earlier in the song i know i've heard it in uh wasteland baby which so far by the way there's so many similarities specifically to wasteland baby from this one you can kind of see where the themes from this one not themes but the sound of this one really carried over to wasteland baby although i think it was more refined on that one as of now so yeah it, it, there's little hints here and there that i think are leading to to that thought process that i'm getting um so i was listening to this one i love the thumpiness of it where it's like especially noticeable in that last chorus where it's like bum 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 like there's, it's a very thumpy like there's constant breaks in the instrumental but also like it constantly kind of starts back up the way that the, that like those thumps are happening they're not exactly lined up how you'd expect like there's sl longer breaks and then shorter breaks and then like it, it, it's very mixed up which I, at first i thought it was maybe a little too eclectic and kind of hard to hard to listen to but then by the end of it i actually really really like it because it adds so much character to the song and makes it very unique which is a drastic change especially considering at the beginning when it first was happening i was i was like i'm not sure if i like this but then again as it went on i really really uh, started to like it and it really really grew on me so that that was awesome <laughs> but yeah this song sounded incredible when I was looking at it, the meaning seems really clear to me. So it was very religious themed, as I was expecting. In the chorus, he talks about how he slithered from Eden just to sit outside your door, in which I picture that by this, it's like he's the snake from Eden. I think that's kind of obvious. But then like in the verse and stuff where he's like, well, well let me read it really quick. Much, much, much later. Okay, so firstly, in verse two, I think is where I really, really started to notice it. Like I was kind of kind of picking up on it a little bit before but i think this is when it was really clear to me was uh when he said there's something broken about this but i was might be hoping about this oh what a sin so obviously he's got some sinful uh thoughts going on right now and then that combined with uh, him comparing himself to the snake from eden actually he's not even really comparing he's just saying he is the snake from eden in the chorus I started to kind of build this picture and then as it got into the, <laughs> the pre-chorus for the second time uh so in the second pre-chorus he says to the strand a picnic planned for you and me a rope in hand for your other man that hang from a tree so that's when it i was like okay i know exactly what this is so he obviously has feelings towards this other person to the extent that he wishes something bad to happen to her current significant others just so he can have he can have this person instead for himself so that's where kind of this sinful mindset comes in mind <laughs> like he literally says a rope in hand for your other man that hang from a tree so i think that's a drastic like hyperbole for the situation maybe he does actually want him dead but i think that's kind of a, a hyperbole here where he's like he's gonna hang this man or get the man to hang himself whichever that be and i thought that was kind of funny that this is the theme for this song called Eden. Because when you picture Eden, at least in my head, it, it, it's paradise. It's a paradise. So him really just taking away only the sin from it and putting it in this context is a very, very unique way to kind of go about how he wishes that this person would leave this man and then go to him instead. I don't know. It's a very roundabout way to put it, but I think it made a good... 
the imagery of it was awesome. That's kind of what I'm getting to it. I like the imagery of like he's coming down from Eden as the snake to do these sin or to have these sinful thoughts to get this person. I I presume he loves or at least is lustful towards. Yeah, that was an incredibly interesting song. And also that instrumental was really unexpected just because it felt so out of place. But I kind of like it. And I think I'm, that one's actually going to grow on me even more the more that I listen to that song. It's one of those things where I can just kind of tell that I'm going to like it more when I listen to it more. Because uh, that instrumental at first is kind of like a shock. But then later on, towards the end of it, I was like... Uh, starting to think i was like okay i think i see why this is here and why i actually think i do like it really starting to see some similarities here to what his future projects are and uh anyways let's get to the next one one week later okay so we've got in a week featuring karen cowley i've never heard of karen cowley before so i presume they're a smaller artist but i might just be left in the dark on them they could be massive for all i know let's get straight into it Such a pretty voice. Getting another outro. Not to continue about this whole outro thing, but that felt more like the hosier outros I know. So maybe I think those first songs must have just been an anomaly on this album, or maybe it just goes back and forth. Maybe it's more uh, just different throughout this album. I do feel like this album is more, I kind of want to say more dynamic, but also when I think back to both of the other albums I've listened to, they've definitely got their own senses of di dynamic to them. Dynamic, dynamics, dynamices. <laughs> I'm not really sure, uh, but I feel like they each kind of are dy dynamic in their own way when I think about it now. Uh, so I thought that was a very, very pretty song. And I really, really loved uh, Karen Kelly's voice. I had never heard of her again, but I wish I had of at this point. Does she have any other music that she's done? Because I'd like to know that because her voice is really, really good. And it's it's a weird way, too, because I think there's definitely some singers that are probably better. But there's something about her voice that really, I don't know, I feel like it really just kind of connects to me. I really, really enjoy it. The way that she just sings, it's so it's so weird to kind of talk about it because I'm not sure how to talk about it because it's almost like it, it's like a puzzle piece with my mind. It's like it just fits perfectly perfectly it's exactly how i like it to sound i don't know it's so it's kind of like how you feel about a song that you really like <laughs> it's just how i feel about her voice it's very very soothing and i think it's perfect for a song like this this song really felt like it was built for her to be a feature on obviously i assume it was but it, it really shows that this was like a perfect fit for her to be on this i don't think i would have liked the song nearly as much if it was just hosier on this one of course it's impossible to say because as far as I know, there's no just hosier version for me to listen to. I think she really does have a huge part in the song and really seals the deal. Yeah, anyways, it's a fantastic song. I really, really enjoyed this. And okay, so is this like a Romeo and Juliet type situation? Because they talk about how like they uh, they become flowers and how like the insects get to them, which obviously I think that's insinuating that they they died. And I'm thinking that it's some sort of like like a slide. pack type thing or like Romeo and Juliet where one dies and then Juliet goes with them. The love is so strong that they go out together. Or, I mean, this is I feel like this is a little more far fetched, but they died at the same time or, or were buried in the same plot or like right next to each other. Like couples usually are. They're usually buried right next to each other. But they were talking about how it's like their bodies were found later. Uh, what, what line was that? But yeah, they'd find us in a week when the cattle show fear after the insects have made their claim. So that that's what makes me think it was some form of source light. We could even say it was a murder at this point. I feel like this could this could go all sorts of different ways. I think that's an interesting take on the Romeo and Juliet type of story. It's not like exactly like Romeo and Juliet, obviously, but that's the I think that's the main similarity here. I don't know if there's any other stories that have similar ones. There's probably some Greek one out there. Uh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely loved how pretty that song and I loved that uh, instrumental outro. That was awesome. I'm obviously I'm a really big fan of instrumental outros. I think I've talked about that a lot on the other album reviews, just a lot on my channel in general. I love instrumentals. I love choirs, that type of stuff. This didn't have a choir, but it did have an instrumental <laughs> and it was awesome. So up next, we have Sedated. Let's get straight into it. The tone feels a lot different already. Okay, 
another one I really enjoyed. I, I, at this point, I'm not even surprised that I'm liking most of these songs this much. Uh, like, it's an intuition where it's like, yeah, I think I'm probably going to like this next one. And sure enough, I did. Uh, this was very catchy. Even, like, the bridge, pre-chorus, like, everything. Everything was just very, very catchy. And it felt like you could inherently kind of sing along with it just by looking at the lyrics with, like, the kind of the rhythm of how he does it. Yeah, I think overall it just sounded great. I feel like I don't have a whole lot to say about this one just because it felt like it was pretty kind of straightforward and simple. Not in like a negative way or any means. Well, I, don't, I don't even want to say it's straightforward just because I'm not 100% sure what they're going for with this one. Other than is it about being in a relationship and doing drugs? That's, that's basically what I'm getting out of this because we got right at the very beginning. Just a little rush, babe, to feel dizzy. <laughs> and then to derail the mind of me, just a little hush, babe. My veins are busy, but my heart's in atrophy. I'm thinking like heroin or something. That's what it's sounding like. And I think heroin was mentioned in one of the previous songs, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember which one. So it's like they're getting lost in the drugs, but they're like enjoying their each other's companies while doing it. And then, I mean, we got lines to like any way to d distract and sedate. Uh, I'm nursing on the poison that never stung. So this seems pretty straightforward, actually, in the case of this is definitely about drugs. I don't know if there's any deeper meaning to it other than just what I said earlier, but you'll have to loop me in on that because it feels like there's nothing else really going on here, but I could be drastically wrong. Yeah, the instrumental is great. Very catchy throughout. I love this one. It's one of my favorites so far. Probably my second favorite out of the ones that I haven't heard. Because, uh, again, I've heard Take Me to Church, so I don't want to count that one out of the new ones. Hard work, work, hard work, work. Okay, so now we've got Work Song. So this is the second song on this album that I've heard before. I think that this was on a Walking Dead episode a long, long time ago. Maybe it isn't, but I feel like it might have been. Anyways, I'm going to really listen to it. I'll probably still like it because I liked it a lot back in the day. Let's get to it. I'd never want once from the cherry tree When my time comes around Hold my body down I'll crawl home to it Another fantastic outro. I love this outro a lot. It's so simple. Yeah, I still love this song. It's, it's a really, really good song. I actually noticed, though, some stuff that I hadn't really paid attention to before when I used to listen to it. Like, there's some parts of the song, I think it's in verse 3, where the guitar kind of matches the lyrics. Like, it kind of goes along with them, uh, just for little brief moments. And I really, really like that. And when I noticed it, it just kind of hit me. And I'm like, man, that's what a good choice to add on towards the end of the song, just to add a subtle change. I don't know. It just, it just feels like a good idea. And it sounds great. So I guess that confirms that. <laughs> Um, that, and then when I was listening to the first verse, the line I'd never once or never want once from the cherry tree, I imagine this has to do with the, uh, wait, 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 okay, so I might be a little dumb. <laughs> the upcoming explanation for what I think that line is all about, it's probably really far-fetched, um, when in reality, it's probably just a euphemism for uh, doing the deed and specifically cheating like he, he'll never cheat anyways i'm just gonna send you right back to where i was going and have fun listening to that the old story about like george washington cutting down the cherry tree where it's like he's basically saying he would never lie uh, to his baby <laughs> so i think that's what that is i think there's also a couple other meanings that kind of go along with cherries and cherry trees but i think that's what that is kind of going for Overall, I just love how much this song really goes for that idea of loving somebody so much to the point where you'd do anything. You'd like go to hell and back, which I think there was a similar theme in at least one or two of his other songs on other albums, because I feel like I remember talking about it. Yeah, so heaven and hell were words to me. I really, really like that line because he's just getting across that heaven and hell don't matter to him as long as he's with this person that he loves. That's such a hard hitting line. And I wish I would have paid more attention to it in the past, but maybe I just wasn't really, I don't know, maybe I just wasn't mature enough when I was younger to really pay too much mind to it. But that really hits hard now, just like looking at it and reading over it. I think this whole song really just hits a little bit harder when you really kind of delve deeper into the lyrics just to and really just try to kind of digest and think about them more. It's such a good song. And also, I, I like that it it's called work song and obviously it sounds a lot like work songs. Uh, I can't think of any examples, but it's like I know I've heard songs that are uh, reminiscent of this that would be considered like a work song. And I think it sounds really cool. And it's an interesting idea to go off of, especially for a love song. It's a weird kind of juxtaposition of uh, musical ideas. It's definitely one of the greatest songs on this album for sure. I really, really love that song. 
All right, so up next, we've got like real people do. Let's get into this because that sounds like a really interesting name. I'm trying to think of like where this could go, but I think I'm just gonna have to let it ride and see. This gives a uh, bony bear so far. This is top tier right here. Absolutely heavenly. It kind of sounds like there's like a banjo layered with a guitar there. I think it is just two guitars. It does sound reminiscent of a banjo, and I think that'd be cool if it was. <laughs> but obviously, it wouldn't change how this sounds because this already sounds the way it does. This was an incredible song once again. Now, now I'm really getting into the loop of what these Hosier albums have really been feeling like. Where it just it feels like every song almost kind of outdoes the last and there's always just more to enjoy like no matter like you could think there's some high to the album and then you get to a new part and you're like whoa like that outdid the previous part and i think that really hit for me as soon as the ease came in right over here <laughs> i think that that was when it really settled in and i was like okay yeah this is this is pure bliss i, I really really am enjoying this song and it's another love song too and i like I think love songs are awesome. Obviously, a lot of people do because they wouldn't be so popular of a, I guess they're kind of their own genre at this point uh, if they weren't or if a lot of people didn't like them. Uh, but yeah, this was a very, very pretty sounding love song. It almost feels like it's tying into the song from earlier where you sang that they were both uh, both in the yard when they found them with like the bugs all over them, just specifically because of the first verse where he's like, I had a thought, dear, however scary about the night, the bugs in the dirt. Why were you digging? Why, what did you bury? Uh, etc. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's just covered in bugs in the in a grave again. So that was immediately what came to mind. Uh, but then as I really kind of looked into that verse, because I was thinking about it for a little bit uh, while I was listening, and it, I, I finally I kind of grasped it where he's pretty much talking about how um, he has a curiosity to wonder how this significant other got to the point where she is, where she's like, she's with him now. Like what happened before that? Like, did she go through any hardships? Did she suffer from something that like led to this point? And it almost feels like maybe he thinks she might be hiding something from him. Not in necessarily a bad way, but like she's hiding these uh these like scars, these emotional scars from past relationships or past uh just past events in her life uh that he wants to know about. Because I mean, when you're in a relationship, you definitely want to you want to kind of know about those things so then you can try to, I guess, make it right. And that almost feels like what that verse is really going for and i think that theme kind of sticks throughout at least part of the song because you go back into verse two and he says i knew that look dear eyes always seeking was there in was there in someone that dug long ago i think here he's talking about how he was in another previous relationship where the same there's like a similar situation he's all too familiar that she's probably going through something or had gone through something uh and is hiding it where how does he come up with these topics i sw i swear they're always so intricate even on this first album they're so intricate these these topics in some of these songs like this one it's like who who would think to make a song about such a specific thing uh, just wow it really just baffles me that he's able to do that plus he makes it sound good he makes it sound good while making it yeah this is an incredible song heavenly i, I thought it was really really good and very calming Okay, so now we got It Will Come Back. Am I going to the bayou with this one? Don't let me in with no intention to keep me This is a little weird. Ooh, <laughs> that was nice. Sounds kind of like bones clattering or something. Okay, so that one was a lot different from every other song on this album. Like I said at the beginning, it sounds like it's straight from the bayou. It actually sounds a lot like the uh, Devil Went Down to Georgia. There's another version of it. Let me pull it up really quick. Okay, so the Primus version of The Devil Went Down to Georgia, it's the one with a music video. It's like claymation. There's a lot of similarities between that song and this one. That one uh, definitely has that kind of bayou sound to it as well. That and there's a lot of kind of creepy sounds and musical uh, techniques, I guess, if you want to call them that, that they use in that version of Devil Went Down to Georgia when the devil kind of shows up. And I think this song has a lot of similar elements in the last half where it's there's just different areas where um, let me see if I can find one. Howling outside your door. Right here, that kind of that creepy violin kind of the scratching of a string that is one of those creepy sounds that i find some similarities to uh the devil went down to georgia that being said 
I think the last half of the song is the best part of the song, and the first half is, I hate to say it, but I think it was a little boring. Um, as a whole, this might be my new least favorite on the album. It just feels so out of place to the point where it, it feels like it didn't necessarily need to be on the album, but I'll see what the next songs are. They might kind of, they might kind of change that. Uh, but it, otherwise though, I think it, it sounds good. It just, again, it just feels very, very out of place here. And even like sound wise, I think I like the sound of the other songs more. This just, this isn't really my style as much as the other ones have been. And also, it seems like he's kind of going back to that idea of him being the snake from Eden. Maybe not technically, like he's not still the snake in this scenario, but he's still, he's like the sinful person trying to come back to this lover uh, or this past lover that no longer wants him. And he was likely the uh, the bad person in this relationship. And I kind of go off of that based on some of the lines throughout the song. But even like specifically in the chorus, he says, don't let me in with no intention to keep it. Jesus Christ, don't be kind to it. Honey, don't feed it. It will come back. Which to me, that insinuates that it's like, this is something that you don't want. And I think he's talking about either himself or like somebody that's trying to go back to their past lover. And it just isn't something that they should do just because of how they were acting. Like what sins they'd committed, what not crimes per se, but uh, just like bad things they've done. Okay, so now we've got Foreigner's God. All right. Uh, that was a kind of sad song, honestly. Well, on the surface level, I don't think it sounds incredibly sad or anything. But when I really was paying attention to it, really looking at these lyrics, like screaming the name of the foreigner's God, the purest expression of grief. OK, so for example's sake, let's say uh, somebody that is an atheist. Yeah, they're, they're an atheist and something like terrible happens, like maybe their loved one is incredibly sick or something like that. And then you'll see them they'll like go to a church and pray to God for the first time. And it's like, at that point, that really is the purest expression of grief. Like you have to be in such a low point to find something to believe in and really grasp to it, just to try to do literally whatever you possibly can. Try to fix it, try to make things work, try to make things better. And that hit really hard when I was listening to it. And the, like the more I listened to it, it just felt like it was hitting even harder. Like even now, it's like thinking about it, I kind of want to cry because, and like you can't really see it. But, oh, actually maybe you can, but my eyes are watering a little bit because it is sad, which by the way, I, maybe that's not what he's talking about, but that's what I'm taking from it. Yeah, it, it's, just, it's just so sad. Just the other day, actually, I was watching uh, this video. It was a couple years ago, uh, Asmin Gold, he's a pretty popular Twitch streamer. He put out a video uh, after his mom died and he was talking about, he's like, I hadn't gone to church and for like for like so long. And he was saying how he just started going and praying and stuff for his mom when she was incredibly sick before she passed away. and thinking of even just thinking of that makes me incredibly sad it's just situations like that i think that's what he's talking about here like to to hosier in this case these foreigners gods are like just gods of religions that he may not follow or maybe he's an atheist i'm not really sure what his religious background is so it's like in this case a, a foreigner's god is just like another religion's god i don't know really just to get down to the point where you are praying to either one god or multiple gods from multiple religions just trying to do everything you can it really is the purest form of grief that that, that is such a hard-hitting song and it also just sounds like it's back on sound theme versus that previous song which i think was a little out of place okay now we're on to cherry wine live this is again one of the songs that i've heard before this one though out of all the three that i've heard from this album is the most alien to me because i i honestly don't remember what it sounds like at all this will basically just be an actual reaction to hearing it for the first time just because i literally can't remember what it sounds like it's been a long time since i've heard it but as you can see i've added it so i, I liked it at some point this is even more bony bear sounding than that one song i mentioned earlier it's coming back to me now wow <laughs> okay like I said at the beginning, it kind of came back to me after a little bit. But at the same time, it's kind of like weird. So some parts I remember, like some of the chorus I do remember. And then like little bits in here, like the instrumental, I, I definitely recall. There's also a lot of parts that I don't remember very well. And I definitely have never thought about the meaning of this song until now. It seems like it's another sad song. I might be really wrong, but it feels like it's about cheating. He really loves this significant other, yet they continue to cheat on him. So just in the chorus, starting with that, the way she tells me I'm hers and she is mine, open hand or closed fist, oh, would be fine. 
that seems to be insinuating like an open hand is like you're going for a handshake so that's that insinuates something good while closed fist tends to insinuate either fighting uh violence things like that like the opposite of a handshake or open hand it's more sad because he's willing to accept it either way because he loves this person so much one way or the other he still wouldn't mind which I, I think that is incredibly sad on its own. But what really adds to it is calls of guilty thrown at me all while she stains the sheets of some other. That's when it really hit me that this is likely about a person that he loves that's uh, that's been cheating on him. And it's even <laughs> I keep on saying it's even more sad, but it really is, especially when you see the, the first part where it's like calls of guilty thrown at me, where he's the one that faces all the all of the guilt and has to face all of her uh, backlash. It's like he's the one that's at fault when in reality it's the other way around. And I've never realized that this song was like that. That being said, though, I think the song sounds really pretty. It sounds like it would be something that'd be like a love song or something nice to sing to somebody. And again, I could be completely wrong on this. I was a lot really wrong about a lot of other stuff about uh, those years last albums. But in the end, music is super uh, based on interpretation from each person that listens to it. So yeah. although I would like to hear the real meaning if that's not it, because that's all I'm getting out of this. Also, one thing I really noticed in this one, there's a lot of similarities to Shrike from uh, Wasteland Baby. Actually, I wrote it down on this note over here where I was like, Shrike, this sounds so much like Shrike. And I've never noticed that before. That and then uh, the birds chirping in the background, I think really adds to that since Shrike is about a bird and the birds are chirping throughout this, which I also adds to that kind of uh, really pretty sounding aesthetic that this song has. I love when sounds of nature are included in music, and this is no exception. This sounded incredible this is a really really good song in the woods is her okay up next we have in the woods somewhere and these names on this one i think have particularly been really good I've, I've just been liking the titles of these songs a lot and they're all like kind of long that's what she said <laughs> <laughs> for the most part i feel like a good chunk of them are long which you wouldn't necessarily expect on an album uh i get some albums are gonna have really long titles and stuff but usually they kind of keep it short and sweet um in this case though they're really they're just long <laughs> mm. i love that Okay, that was a really weird but good song. I wasn't expecting this because it's more of just a, a story. Think uh, of Monsters and Men. Uh, what's it called? Oh, Dirty Paws. Like something like that. Like Dirty Paws tells a story while also standing for, uh, I think, World War II. And in this case, I'm pretty sure the story is standing for just like living life. Like you're going to go through all these hardships during your life. Okay, one second. I gotta, I gotta gather all my thoughts up in here. Come on. Okay, so like on the surface, he's stuck in the woods. He hears a fox. It's it's hurt. He goes to put it out of its misery. And then when he's doing that, the bear, I, I think it's a bear because he said in one of the last lines, how many years I know I'll bear. I think that's kind of supposed to insinuate that it's it's a bear in this story. And this bear, which was probably the one that hurt the fox in the first place, goes after him next. And then he continues to run. And as he's running, he forgets all about how... um. Like his end, his end goal then is just to survive rather than while he was originally either looking for his love or just like thinking about her. I don't know, maybe they passed away or something. But then I think it stands for a life lived. You go through all these hardships looking for someone to love or like something happens to someone you love. And then at that point, like your thoughts kind of go towards them and where they are now, like if you believe in an afterlife, maybe they're in heaven or something that could be super far fetched. Maybe it just is a surface level thing where it's just a fox, him, him killing, trying to put a fox out of its misery, then getting chased by a bear. That could just be the whole thing. Uh, it's something I'm not sure on. And you can let me know. Obviously, I, I won't know the uh, real meaning, especially first time listening. But as for how the song sounded, again, it sounded incredible. Those choruses of just like the ooze were so good they they kind of reminded me of the previous song where i was like man this is heavenly i'm getting the same feeling from this uh so yeah another banger let's uh get to oh it's it's actually the last song in the album run run okay i'm done i'm done i'm done uh, let me just get over to that song all right we're 
pick it up. I need you to run to me. All right. That song seemed like it was pretty straightforward. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'm not 100% sure what's going on with the verses. So maybe it's not necessarily straightforward, but on, on the surface level, I think it's straightforward. Or it's just a, another love song. The love is so rare that he wants it needs to be hidden from the world. That's like something I've heard that somewhere. And that's why it really comes to mind is I know I've heard some phrase or something, idiom maybe, that regards uh, hiding a rare love from the world. I really can't remember if you have any ideas what of what I may be thinking of make sure to let me know in the comments down below because that's really actually bothering me that I can't think of it uh but I know I've heard it before so like on the basis level it's just again it's a love song I, I really don't have much more to say on this because I honestly don't know what's going on with the verses it for sure looks like there's a lot going on in the verses but even then I think it still goes back to what I was saying about it being a love song it's just there's a lot of different like metaphors and stuff that I I'm not familiar with what they're talking about. If you could fill me in on this, that'd be super cool. You guys have been great about that, especially on the Unreal Unearth album. You guys had so much information to let me know on that. It was incredible. I learned so much about that uh, and just about all sorts of just different random things that just happened to correlate with the music from that album. Hopefully the same thing can happen here because that'd be super cool. It definitely helped me build a better understanding of this. But that was a strange song also for this album to end on but at the same time it's like i get it that it's not the ori original ending song but then on the other hand i could kind of see it because it's it's a very simple song at least to me at this moment since i don't understand any of the metaphors uh but at the moment it feels like a very simple song and even like production wise i think it's pretty simple by the way i mean that in the good way not a bad way uh, I just love that it kind of ends in that simple way. Because at first I was thinking, this is a little weird for it to end like this. But then on the other hand, I kind of like it that way. Even if this isn't the original ending, I think it fits this way as well. <clears throat> so sadly, <laughs> we've reached the end of this album. It went by incredibly fast for me. But I've been filming for about two and a half hours. A little less, actually. By the time I get done with this, it'll probably be around two and a half. And it really just feels like it's been maybe 40 minutes. This album went by really, really quick. I think there was a few songs on this one that I didn't like quite as much as uh, the other albums I've heard, but that also I think stands to show just how much Hozier has learned and how much he's really built on his skills from this album to the next ones. Which is funny because I hear a lot of people talking about how they really like this album, and then I hear stories about how people think that uh, Wasteland Baby is worse than this one. But in my mind, I think it's just been a staircase where this one is probably the worst. Uh, it's still really good, but it's definitely worse than the other two. And then you go to Wasteland Baby, and then you go up again to Unreal Unearth. I think it really is a staircase, which is excellent, and it shows that he's got these skills that he's been working on and increasing, and he's been increasing variation in his stuff. He's been trying different styles. That last album especially, there were so many different styles. And like you can see all the similarities in this album of like where he kind of built from to those next steps, which is super cool. So as a whole, I think this album was really good. I think there's definitely a few stinkers i say stinkers really lightly i just think there's some that are a little worse uh but even the worst ones on this one i still enjoy just not as much as a lot of his other stuff like um it will come back i think that was it yeah so like it'll come back um honestly thinking about it i think it'll come back is really the only quote-unquote stinker as in it j really just doesn't fit into the album for me like almost at all. I'm I'm really surprised that it was on this album. Uh, and again, I think it'd go really good on other albums. Like I was saying when I was talking about that song, was it? Oh wait, no, it wasn't that song. But I think that I meant to say that that one also sounds like it could have been on a Chris Stapleton album. But this one uh, definitely could as well. Like it feels like it could go on other albums I love, but it just feels so out of place on this one. Let me know if you feel the same. Uh, also, let me know which album of his is your favorite out of the three I've listened to, which I. I, I think are the only three again unless there's some secret album i don't know about these are the only three yeah let me know which one has been your favorite because i'd, I'd really like to know what like your guys's opinions are on that because again i think this one is definitely my least favorite and then it goes to wasteland baby then unreal unearth he's really really been getting good at what he does i love the vibes on this one overall it felt like there's a theme of love which at the same time i think that's at least a theme on all of his albums that's one thing i've found that's in common between them and then also I want to mention really quick, I think I talked about it earlier in this review uh, slash reaction that uh, there's definitely way more similarities with Wasteland Baby from this album than what there is in Unreal Unearth. And I think a lot of that comes down to that kind of staircase effect where he's been building on what he has 
but he's also been like changing as he's been going so uh wasteland baby was kind of the middle step where he started kind of experimenting with other stuff and then i think in unreal unearth he really uh took that leap and really just started going all over the place he had a lot of different styles in that one that i wasn't expecting uh especially based on what i'd heard from him there was nothing that uh really sounded like a lot of the songs on that album and actually now that i think about it there's a couple more things i want to say about this one take me to church actually that's pretty much the only the last thing i really got to say about this one take me to church also feels like it doesn't fit very well on this album i think it's a really good song but it just feels like it's its own entity and that may just be because i've heard it so many times but it really feels like it doesn't need to be on this album it sounds a lot different than the other songs i don't know it's also kind of an outcast for me which I don't know why I wasn't thinking about that earlier. I think in my head, I'd already separated Take Me to Church to its own separate identity rather than being a part of this album. Okay, so yeah, so now we've got uh, It Will Come Back and Take Me to Church. I think those two are definitely weird. I like them, but I don't think they should be on this album. They're very out of place here. Okay, so great album. <laughs> really enjoyed it. Sounded awesome. I don't know if I'll be getting the vinyl on this one, but if I do, I'll let you know. If you liked this reaction slash review, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. I would really, really appreciate it. And again, let me know if there's anything that I missed, any meanings that you'd like to kind of explain to me, pretty much anything. If you have anything to tell me at all, leave it down in the comments. I read all my comments, so I'll get to it. Oh, and one last thing. I've created a new channel since my last Hosier video. A lot of you probably haven't watched a lot of the videos in between uh, Unreal Unearth and now, which is fine, by the way, <laughs> it's completely fine. Uh, but I've released a new channel since then. It's called the Strat Rat. It's a variety channel. I plan on adding more stuff right now. It's just a couple game videos. I put a lot of work in them. You might like them if you like watching gaming videos. I want to put out a few more variety ones next. I have some big plans for that channel and I also have some more big plans for this channel. I saw that the new Hosier EP came out. If you want me to react to that, let me know. I'd love to listen to more Hosier. So yeah, anyways, I'm just, I feel like I'm kind of rambling now. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you later. Bye-bye.